Everybody ready? Good morning. Thank you all for coming out. I want to give you an update of where we're at on the investigation of the explosion that took place in this neighborhood last night. Uh, again, I'm Brian Manley, Chief of Police of the Austin Police Department. Of Fred Milanowski, the special agent in charge for the ATF. Christopher Combs, the special agent in charge of the FBI. And Troy Gay, an assistant chief with the Austin Police Department. Again, we're here for an incident that began last night at approximately 8.32 when we had an explosion take place in the neighborhood behind us. That explosion injured two people that were walking along the side of the road. Those individuals are currently in a local hospital. They are a 22 and 23 year old males, both Anglo males. They are both in the hospital right now. They are in stable condition, but they did receive significant injuries from the explosion that took place. Where we are right now, we have made the scene safe this morning. As you all know, we held the scene last night, given that it was dark and given that we believe that a tripwire may have been in effect on this device. Given the safety concerns that gave us for not only this neighborhood, but for all of the public safety professionals that are here working this, we held the scene overnight so that we could process it in daylight in a much safer way. What we have been able to do this morning is do another sweep of the entire area so that we know that the area is now safe and we now have the specialists from both ATF and FBI conducting the post-blast investigation behind us. We have additional resources being brought to bear in Austin to continue assisting us in this ongoing investigation. We have bomb technicians from both the San Antonio Police Department as well as the Houston Police Department en route, and the Texas Department of Public Safety is assisting us as well, bringing in additional resources. There has already been a significant presence from our federal partners since these events began. And as we reported yesterday, we have over 500 agents and their teams working on Austin cases alone. And we have additional resources being brought in again by both of those agencies. And as has already been broadcast, there is a $100,000 reward out there for someone who can give us a tip leading to the identification of the suspect or suspects in this incident along with another $15,000 reward that's been put out by the governor's office for the same. We would like to reach out to those that live in the, in the Travis Country neighborhood behind us. If you have video surveillance on your house, whether it be surveillance cameras, nest cameras, anything like that, we want to get your video footage so that we can have that analyzed and identify any potential suspicious persons, vehicles, or anything that may be of interest to this investigation. So again, if you live in Travis Country and you have video surveillance on your home, please contact us at 512-974-5210 so we can get in there quickly and get that video. This neighborhood is still um, being locked down right now for safety, uh, and we expect it to be so until approximately 2 p.m. today, but we will update that as necessary throughout the day. Again, we're doing this in overabundance of caution so that we can keep this neighborhood safe while we process the scene. There's still a significant amount of evidence. As you can imagine, with a blast scene like this, the evidence is strewn across quite a significant distance, and it's going to take us a while to methodically go through and collect this evidence so that we make sure we get it uh, right. What I can tell you is based on the preliminary review that we have done at this time, we have seen similarities in the device that exploded here last night and the other three devices that have exploded in Austin starting on March 2nd. Again, this is preliminary information, but we have seen similarities. The big difference in this device, again, is we believe that a tripwire was used in this device. Agent Milanowski from the ATF is going to talk here in a little while and go over tripwires and what all that entails. So that will be covered in more depth here in a few minutes. What we want to re re reinforce is the safety message that we've been putting out to this community for quite some time. And we've, we've obviously updated that a little bit. In the past, we've been talking about the importance of not touching suspicious packages, not moving packages, not handling packages. The belief that we are now dealing with someone who's using trip wires shows a higher level of sophistication, a higher level of skill. And so now what we are imploring the community to do, if you see any suspicious object or item that looks out of place, 
do not even approach it, but instead call 911 and report that to the police department so we can send folks out to check that and ensure that it is safe. So again, do not approach these suspicious items, anything that you may see, whether it be a bag, a backpack, a box. And again, this is why we have avoided giving specific descriptions of the prior three devices because it was never confirmed that that would be the design that this suspect or suspects would stick with. So that's the important message today to this community is make sure that you are safe and make sure you contact us if you see something that looks suspicious or that looks out of place. Again, we want to ensure the safety of this neighborhood and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can as we work through this investigation to do so. With that, um, I'm going to ask Agent uh, Special Agent Milanowski uh, to come up and talk a little bit about tripwires. All right, we want to talk a little bit about this because this device is a little more sophisticated than what we have seen to date. Um, all the evidence from the previous devices is at the ATF National Laboratory, as will this evidence. But the tripwire is a victim actu actuated switch, it literally uses some kind of wire. And when there's pressure put on that wire, it activates or detonates the device. So it can be either from tripping over it or picking up the package. Any tension that's put on that wire, sometimes it's thin filament, sometimes it's fishing line. But like the chief said, we're even more concerned now that people see something suspicious, they just stay away from it altogether and contact law enforcement. Because if they move that package or if they step on that trip wire, it's likely to detonate. So we want to put that information out to the public and make sure that if they see a bag, a suitcase, a box, anything that's unusual and not normally in that area, call law enforcement. We're bringing in extra explosive detection canines in order to be able to uh, check out all those packages uh, and make sure the public stays, stays as safe as possible. Thank you. I just want to highlight, uh, obviously this is very concerning to us, the FBI has brought in over 350 special agents to work here. It's an unprecedented response to Austin. We're here to support the Austin Police Department. I want to highlight again with these packages, with this tripwire, this changes things. It's more sophisticated. It's not targeted to individuals. We're very concerned that with tripwires, a child could be walking down a sidewalk and hit something. So it's very important that here in Austin, if anyone sees anything suspicious, you do not go near that package and you immediately call law enforcement so we can get bomb techs out there to deal with the suspect package. Additional teams have been brought to bear here in Austin with the area police departments, the state bomb squad, the federal bomb squads are here. We're bringing in extra bomb techs as we speak to make sure that we can handle every suspicious call that happens here, not just in Austin, but in the surrounding communities as well. So it is very important that we stay away from anything we consider to be suspicious. I would also like to highlight there's a $100,000 reward out right now for anyone that can give us information that can lead us to stop the bombings. We need this to stop. We are very concerned that people can get hurt by this just by walking now. We have tripwires. $100,000 is a lot of money. And we're hoping somebody knows something and that they can call us and help us stop what's going on here. Thank you. And the only thing that I'll add before we open it up for questions is we have utilized the reverse 911 system. However, many of you all probably already aware there was a glitch in the system and it went out across the majority of the city. So we are putting out through social media, Travis Country is the only neighborhood that is affected and Travis Country is the neighborhood that we want to have people stay sheltered in place in their residences until 2 p.m. this afternoon or until we advise further. So with that, we'll go ahead and open up for questions. Chief, Chief, Chief. At, what time, at what time are you going to call this domestic terrorism? Well, you know, that's been the question all along is, is this terrorism? Is this hate related? And we're early on in the investigation today. We've only gotten into the preliminary phases. And as the day moves on, that is something that we're going to analyze. We are clearly dealing with what we expect to be a serial bomber at this point based on the similarities between now what is the fourth device. And again, as we look at this individual and the pattern and, and what we're looking at here, we will have to determine if we see a specific ideology behind this or something that will lead us uh, along with our federal partners to make that decision. So there's, there's, there's some about the what, what are y'all doing down there? 
Right now, the ATVs are here just in case we need to go into this green belt. Again, we're not certain from which direction the suspect or suspects may have entered this area, and so they're here in case we need to get through the wooded area here as part of the evidence collection process. I can't hear. Have you been able to other neighborhoods? Are you searching in different places? So what we're doing right now, again, as we've talked about before, this has to be a community response. This is something we're going to solve as a community. The officers that are working in the neighborhoods are paying attention not only for the suspicious packages, but also items that may look out of place. The Department of Public Safety is going to send additional troopers into the Austin area to help us patrol and be visible in the neighborhoods and to help us look for those suspicious items or just to inform the community of where we're at with the investigation. And so there's additional work being done on this. Do you believe this suspect has a message? A suspect profile or any kind of um, information about who he was targeting? So as we mentioned yesterday, we have had a, a large number of tips that have come in through the, the past week and each and every one of those tips gets worked by the teams we described. They come into the command center and they get assigned out to either a team of ATF investigators or FBI investigators or Austin Police Department investigators. So throughout the course of this past week, there were points in time where we had persons of interest because of information that had been provided. And then as we furthered the investigation into those individuals, either their backgrounds, their social media life, things like that, we have run those leads to ground. And at this point, we are following up on a few more. We have had persons of interest um, and we continue to look at a few, but we have not identified a suspect or suspects as of this time. Chief, have you been able to speak with, have you been able to speak with the, the two latest victims? And what at all? And this latest uh, bombing, was the package visible? Is the trip wire visible? I think people might want to know, you know what they should be looking for. Yeah. So as far as speaking to the victims, they're obviously in the hospital receiving care, and that's what we're concerned with. We have had initial conversations with them to get an idea of where the device was, and the device was sitting um, next to a fence is where we expect it to be. And again, as, as, as uh, Special Agent Milanowski talked about, the trip wire can be a filament wire, can be fishing line, it can be a metal wire. So that's why people just need to pay attention to see if there's a device that is, is, is seated somewhere near, because the trip wire would be attached to that device and it would pull on it to then activate. So, so again, that's what we need is, is people paying attention for suspicious objects, bags, boxes, backpacks, anything that just looks out of place, and then especially if they see any type of a wire uh, extruding from that. Is it going to reach out to the suspects at all about similarities, material, anything? So what we have said to this community from day one, we are going to give you information that keeps you safe. That's why we got on camera at 1.30 in the morning when we felt like there might be a trip wire in play because we didn't want to wait until this morning to put that information out because that's information that helps keep this community safe. The specific components of the bomb, the firing mechanism that these suspects or the suspect or suspects are using, that doesn't help keep the community safe and that is something that is being kept confidential by, the, by us and our federal partners to protect the integrity of the investigation. Is it difficult to set these without suicide bombs? Well, again, as we said from the very beginning, we were not willing to classify this as terrorism, as hate, because we just don't know enough. And what we have seen now is a significant change from what appeared to be three very targeted attacks to what was last night an attack that would have passed, that would have hit any, a random victim that happened to walk by. So we've definitely seen a change in the method that this suspect or suspect is using. Chief, you tried to communicate with the, uh, about the why the suspect is doing they, what they're doing. Were they, were they walking along the sidewalk along the fence as they came across <coughs> the strip wire, or were they walking between houses? Can you kind of help yeah. paint the picture of how they actually sure. came across Sure. What, what we believe, and again, this is all preliminary, but what we believe is they were walking either on the sidewalk or the grassy area between the street and the fence. And so they were not walking between houses, but alongside a roadway. Chief, you tried to reach you out to the suspect earlier. Do you think this suspect or suspect still has a message for police? <laughs> Well, again, we've, we've opened ourselves up for a message, and that's why we asked him to contact us and gave him phone numbers to contact us at. And again, we won't understand what the motive might be behind this or the reason behind this until we have an opportunity to talk to the suspect or suspects that are involved. How hard are you, 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 you on the lookout calling? for, for objects that are suspicious? Should people adjust their lifestyle in any way until there's a suspicious event? 
Well, I think people need to be vigilant. People need to pay attention, as we've been saying, um, you know, back back since the past week and a half, is pay attention to your surroundings, pay attention in your neighborhoods. If things look out of place, if there are suspicious persons, call us, let us know what's going on, and that way we can come out and we can look into that to see if it is at all related to what we're having happen in Austin right now, or if it's not, and therefore we can put that to rest. Does the tripwire suggest uh, a military background? You know, a tripwire doesn't doesn't necessarily suggest that there's a military background. What it does suggest, though, is that the suspect or suspects that we are dealing with have a higher level of sophistication um, than, than maybe we initially thought based on them changing their methods to a, a, a more difficult device. Yesterday afternoon, you asked the um, suspects to contact you with their message. Do you think last night was their response? You know, we won't know that until we have an opportunity to talk to the suspect or the suspects, whether or not that was a motive behind this. That's just something we're not going to know. And to that end, again, we will I, I will reach out to the suspect or suspects and ask that you contact us, ask that you reach out to us, communicate with us so that we can put this to an end. There are innocent people getting hurt in this community, and it needs to come to a stop. The last thing we want to have is, is another injury or another death in our community related to this incident. Chief, Thank you. That he wants okay, ATF interviews are going to start right over here in the shade. The first three up are Mark, so, Bridget, and Ava. Reminder, you get three minutes each. So just one time. thing. We would like to talk to the shooter. We'd like him to contact us, as the chief said. Uh, we don't understand why they are doing this. We have people here that he can talk to, and we would like that to occur. So we would like him to reach out and talk to us. Thank you. I'm sorry, i got to go. We're back. <laughs> Paul Weber, Bridget, I think we're like nine or twelve. Paul Weber, so 